All right, let's install Linux Mint Cinnamon 19.1. It's in the virtual box and we're gonna start Linux Mint, install it, and then the topic of the video can start. That is, I've uh, made a new GitHub on GitHub Eric Dubois and it's for everything Linux Mint related to get i3 running, yes. I3 is in the window tiling manager or tiling window manager and it uses so uh, well the minimum amount of CPU, minimum amount of memory. It's incredible how fast it is and it just works anywhere. Oh, that's a mistake of mine. Still in Belgium, still an Azerte keyboard. Continue, continue. Erase disk and install Linux Mint. Continue. So he's formatting as of now. And he's asking the time zone now. And everything is okay. Log me in automatically. Let's keep it like this so we see the login screen. That's nice too. So this is, let's take a look around. This is Linux Mint Cinnamon. It's gonna be this kind of look, these are the specific folders for Linux Mint. The green color is still there, but good news. There are a lot, tons of icons that are not green. I mean, why Aqua is one of my favorites as this guy, but there is more. There is Mint Y Blue. Brown, brown has never been my favorite, but gray is. And mint white orange, why not? Pink from time to time. Purple, sometimes red, also a favorite of mine. Mint white scent. Teal, depending on the wallpaper maybe. So lots of possibilities already here, but also when you do the theming. So the theming, the mint white dark, that's the border, but there's also the controls that you can change, like go for the dark theme. So the icons fit with the theme, so that's great. So you choose this theme, mint white aqua theme, and also here the mint white dark blue and aqua. So that this menu also contains the bluish theme, which is actually wonderful. Good job, Linux Mint, beautiful. And um, I do believe I recognize the Arc theme, but I'm not sure, haven't looked at it yet, but it's uh, very similar to the Arc icon themes. And the rest seems to be coming from also a known icon theme. But before I'm sure, better not say anything and figure it out first but we're almost done here let's uh, pause the video all right let's um, restart now always best to well to actually install an operating system and even and when possible not on a virtual box as we do now but on the real thing let's get rid of this Power off, get rid of the drive, it's not in there, that's fine. Control F and boot up full screen in VirtualBox. And then the video is about to start. It's about, and this is the look, the login screen. It's about i3. And one of the things that's important, that's uh, to tell you guys that any video out there about i3 is inter interesting to watch it does not it does not need to be on linux mint it does not need to be on on anything really it's it, it's i3 is desktop and even distro and even uh, i mean if it's on rpm or dep or arch it doesn't really matter it's independent from where it's, it's installed upon as long as you can install it then afterwards, yeah, then, then it's just another desktop. You need to figure out how it works and that's it. 
So navigate to my GitHub. And today I've made a new one. I'm trying to keep it up to date for the coming years. An i3 installation on the latest Linux Mint. So whatever Linux Mint is, is at that point the latest, I'll try, try to update it and see if, still, if everything still works. One of the things I always do is make Sardi and Servant icons for it. So that's a good time then actually to test this script out. So this i3 installation, we go with either do a download zip or we do a git clone. So this is a URL and this is a zip code. So either of them will work. The advantage for me, if I extract it here, then it's actually not a GitHub. So there is no hidden file, control H. There is nothing dot git ish in there. So that's one approach. Or I say I go to the desktop, for instance, right mouse click, open in terminal, and then sudo, I'm probably gonna need to install git. Yeah, I, I do. So sudo apt install git, first get the application. And then you can tell to the system git clone, give me a copy of what's on this URL. Control shift V and I'd rather work like this because when I see something to change and when I see a typo or anything I we can improve, I'll just make run first this setup. Well, we can run this as well. So there's a little script that's in here. So I can uh, post later on. So do a, this command, git version one, and I'm gonna update it. Uh, update is really me, update etc and everything goes online so anything that i change here i can push it back on here so this is what you do first see that you get the information and the information is now on my desktop here and then you can start by going over the like so going over the elements now this thing in here well i'll try to be as complete as possible but there are many tutorials on Eric Dubois about i3, lots of them, and all, all, all kinds of um, desktops and, and environments like Antergos and like uh, Arch Linux and, and Solus and so on. My point is, don't think in a box, inside a box, really. i3 can be installed anywhere, just follow along some of the, the, the ways how to install i3. So installation of i3, that's a folder that sounds interesting and all the rest is what we need later on. So this will be will become our .i3 folder, so our hidden folder, well put out dot, frankly, .config slash i3, that's where it is. And uh, this is going to be in there, but to get i3, to install i3, we need just to run some numbers and that's it. Let's move this over here. Now. I don't know about you, but I don't like this kind of look. So like make big, let's make it also beautiful. What we're looking at a little bit bigger. Colors are good. Scrolling I don't like. And the uh, show menu bar is gone. And if we do it like this, it's a lot better. All right. Now, before we have fun, Let's have fun in some beautiful way. Let's see. It's here, it's there, it's somewhere. Themes. There you go. Put the themes there. So I like Mint Y. Like I said, the Mint Y Aqua is beautiful. Mint Y Dark Aqua. And the Mint Y Dark Aqua. So that's my little bit of fun. So actually make a nice uh, well environment to work upon. Okay, so we're all black. So LS, what's in here? Some files. We're going to install some dependencies. Okay, so in the hundreds, we open not with LibreOffice, 
why would I ever open it with LibreOffice? So let's see what we have. Not much yet. So the standard text editor, that's an option, but again, let's make it nice and beautiful. This is not nice. 12 is bigger, that's okay. And here's the theme. I think there was a nice one the other day. This one was a nice one. I like this one. So this is what's running at this point in time. So it's going to get some dependencies. In order to build i3, we need this, 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 and all these extra elements. I figured it out a while ago. So that's what he's installing right now. And if there is an error, that's the line number two up here. If there is an error, then you say, forget about it. Um, display line numbers like this. Maybe also interesting. Okay. So, fine. Let's have a look. If I can do something else. No, let's leave it open then. So that's number arrow up, number 100, ls. So then we're going to install number 110. It's a dependency for our display for um, from Airblader. And Airblader is the same GitHub where i3 caps next comes from. That's the next in line. So the next in line is this one display. And as you can see, Airblader i3 git, that's where we get it from Airblader. So basically, we need this package to get to be to be able to do this the i3 gaps next um, so it's not a, the regular i3 I'm going for I, I want to have some space between one window and the other window and, and if, if transparent as assuming that one of them is a terminal and the terminal is transparent you see the wallpaper through it that's the kind of look I'm going for and that's why we install i3 gaps all right, 120 is the next number. And this time we're going inside this element, it's cloning everything. So that's this line, git clone everything. And then it's going to CD to the temporary folder and it's going to follow all the configurations that he needs to do. So that's just this, what this says here is just coming from a GitHub somewhere. And this is version 4.16 that we have already from Michael Stapelberg and contributors. Fine. Unless that was on the 30. No, on the 20. Now we're going to go for 130. And 130 is all about getting some stuff that we need. Some, some basic stuff. I3 is a keyboard driven tiling window manager meaning running firefox is ctrl alt f running vivaldi is ctrl alt v and stuff like that i mean everything is programmed inside a file called config and in this config you have keyboard shortcuts and you put them in there in order that your your memory your finger and your finger memory kicks in when you want something you just press Ctrl Alt T, which is the terminal, and so on and so on. So, in order to have a functional i3 and the keyboards to function, you need, of course, to install them. So, it's some some of these things are um, useful. Like the Rofi thing is is also menu. menu. There's also a menu, and XFC4 app, app Finder is there. Well, is there anyway when you install? Linux Mint XFCE, it's there for uh, a visual kind of menu. So you, if you don't want that, you just put a hashtag in front of it. That's as simple as that. Just do not run it and put it before, hashtag before, and that's it. So it is installing. Variety is installing. 
and other stuff is installing. i3 blocks is no longer standard, but I've made a change. There was a little change, like extra lines up here. I think these two lines are new since the last, I think two years has passed since I ever touched this uh, GitHub again. So it's improved, it works now. All it needed was extra lines here. But like I said, in order to get something that works all the time, seeing that we do not have lots of time to go in all these scripts again, uh, I hope this will last for a few years now. So 130 is running. Later on, we're gonna copy paste this guy. This is basically just a copy paste and all the rest is just gibberish to figure out, hey, are you on Pac-Man? So on Arch or are you on Debian, etc. That's not important. The thing is, it's gonna copy paste everything from a um, place. Pop, pop, pop. Where is it? Existing the folders. So it's gonna git clone it again. So I know it, I know the data is already on your engine, but um, it's going to get it anyway back from the GitHub from uh, this guy. And at the end, it's going to create a directory. If it does not exist, it's gonna create it and I copy, gone, copy paste everything over, asking, hey, you're sure? I'm gonna remove everything, are you sure? Yes. Okay, then yes, he's gonna copy paste everything over. And the rest is some cleaning stuff. So this is the actual line that really copies over. Is it? Yes. Okay. So that's next up, but this is still running number 130. So this guy is going over every little thing. And let's see, we have screen key here. The following new packages will be installed. Screen key, meaning we are here in the installation. Simple screen recorder, sublime text. In the meantime, we're already here. And variety is up for installation. This might be variety. Yep, there it is. Variety 067. Oh, it's gone. And variety is installed. Going for player CTL, player control. And everything built. We're actually, uh, i3 blocks is already built, is it? Checking, checking, errors, errors, player control. Uh huh i3 blocks okay fine everything installed good so this can go 140 is the next one and then basically we can actually now say if that's done yes i'm going to copy paste everything over if that's done we could actually take already uh, take already a look but it's not complete so the fonts are still there let's add something else as well in the preferences here maybe you know maybe you don't but you can add open in terminal so I have this button up here I quickly can open it like this terminal in this folder so I'm gonna do it anyway it doesn't take that much time so font yes install yes uh, again another font you want to install yes install a font these are the fonts that are necessary for the conky. There is a conky also in i3. And then install some icons. What are we doing here? Let's take a look at 200 first. So 200, he still does that, does he? Ah, I hate when he does that. So that's a setting you can easily find. Um, pop up, easily find, I say, and then I'm starting to think, okay. So that one, and then window tiling, maximize instead of tile and dragging a window at the top of the edge. I would like to have that setting. So at the top, full. So this font thing is just saying, hey, there is a font. Yes, no, there is no font. And then he's gonna copy paste one font over. And here's another font. So these two guys have been copied over and all the rest are checks and control things. 
Then the icons is going to run a script. And the script is in here. And the script is going to detect something, clean something up, and make a directory, and is going to install. It's even going to look what kind of uh, application you need. Do you need apt-get or do you need pacman or eopg, pkg, right? In the end, it's going to check us also on what disk row am I on? Am I on Linux Mint or Ubuntu, etc.? Or an Arch and Solus and stuff like that. But basically, it's just gonna copy paste over everything that's uh, downloaded from this GitHub. Okay, that's that. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, set. So. Oh, the icons are done. So the last thing was the icons. We have also themes. And the only thing I've left in there was the arc theme. So themes. Okay, no, no, I know this one. Display, install the arc theme. So that's done already. Number 500 is going to get some more stuff that I like. I like to work with Atom is one of those, Google Chrome is one of those, Spotify is one of those, Vivaldi Snapshot is one of those. And if you would like, you can install ZSH too. It's not our standard ZS, ZSH, mind you. It's a bit special. Um, applications. By a bit special, I just mean that we are getting ZSH, which is nothing really, but then I'm gonna get my, oh, my ZSH. And this has a lot of themes. And instead of the Robbie Russell theme, I'm gonna take the random theme. So every time you open up a terminal, it's gonna be another theme. But it will only be so if you change. So this, you need to type this manually. A lot of text to tell you, retype this line again and fill in your own username. Okay, and then after reboot, you'll have a ZSH. Spotify is being installed. And Google Chrome is already installed. Atom is there as well. Why is Atom so interesting, guys? It takes long to open, I know, but it has some advantages. An editor is important and you have to find your own way uh, what do I like as editor? So this is one of the things I like at it. The, the look, the, the blackness and all the colors that go with it. And also the left thing here. So the left thing is easy for you to follow along because you see st straight away, okay, where are we in the folder? Everything we've done here already can be checked again and you can scroll through it. It's quite easy to follow. And we're here somewhere, Vivaldi snapshot. And now we're going to go for a copy paste from my settings, from GTK3, uh, GTK RC, and also the rest. So we're gonna paste, ooh, copy paste them over. I think I've closed it, have I? Guess so. So if you think, hey, did something go wrong? Was it now installed, yes or no? There's only one way to do that. That's just to run it again, right? So let's see if this... Uh... does anything more. Um, what we can do as well, because we don't, don't have the time or don't want to spend the time. That's more like it. 500 ends in Vivaldi. So control C. Do we have Vivaldi? We might have, so no need to run it again. There is Vivaldi. Do not show, yes. So let's go over to number 600. And those are my personal settings and you'll see why that is. I'll just change, um, yeah, you won't see my personal settings. <laughs> 
because the personal settings I have are the, exactly the same I've chosen now. <laughs> but okay, you'll see that if you go to the personal and to the config and the JTK3, the setting, it is Mint Y Aqua. So I copied this over, sans 10. Breeze Snow, that's something new, another uh, cursor. So this is not the Breeze Snow, that's new. And in here is as well this guy, which contains the same, but then for GTK2, Breeze Snow, Sounds, etc. Okay, so we're gonna see another cursor basically. The rest is the same. All right, so be it. We cancel and we log out. Logging out is enough. Logging out. i3 is installed. Usually I go up here, that's why my mouse went already there. But here, it's actually down here. So i3, booting up. Variety is installed for the first time in his life. You say no thanks. You check things like, um, fetch is not interesting. Desktop is out, ping is out, splash, flicker. This is all good. Close. There was one more thing maybe we should do. By the way, so when you launch i3, you see two things. I thought, let's let's put these two guys out there. You get a file manager and you get a terminal. So whatever things you have not installed or you tried out, hopefully you'll get either of these two guys and then you can go in here. If you have this one, you can say open terminal as well. Uh, you can start typing if you have the terminal. So hopefully you see the same as I do. Now an old n, for instance, an old n is already going to make it beautiful change. This is our workspace number two. So one and two. Two is empty. So when I close this gun again, with super two, it's back, and super three is another one. And I'm gonna put here the old t, or I super shift return, and everything just just opens up. So this is a conky, a conky just to display you that we are losing a lot of amount of memory. i3 uses 412 megabytes, it's incredible that much. Now, I'm joking of course, this is very low in resource and um, your CPU is working super hard, 1%. So it's really, really amazing. So give i3 a go. I've made a lot of efforts, making a lot of tutorials to, well, support uh, i3. And here you find another way how I can support you. That's all the keyboard shortcuts. So our mod key is a super key, so the Windows key, right? And when you press super enter, everything's just gonna work. And um, like the super F12, this is your Rofi thingy. So Vivaldi, oh, it's typing. Okay, so Firefox. Okay, Firefox. And you start typing and you start doing your stuff. And at some point in time you say, okay, I know my stuff now, I can get rid of these conkeys because a conkey is not really intention for um, your system. I mean, for, for a tiling window manager, it's a bit strange to have, um, oh, it's not installed yet. Each top. Uh-huh. Okay, he asked me a specific question that we never get on Arch Linux. So just gonna go with it. Go with the flow. Configure minus A. Okay. Are you happy now? Ah, can't find an archive for it. The package atom needs to be reinstalled. Okay. Fine, if issues arrive, go back to the drawing board, in this case here. And you have here the installation of i3, application, here's Atom, install Atom. Don't know why, it's, ah, probably because I broke it off late, a bit, uh, 10 minutes ago or something. I just broke it off somewhere halfway, I suppose. Anyway, that's been done. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say that if you go to if you go to the 
dot config. There are lots of tutorials. Again, I want to stress that any tutorial about i3 is good. It does not need to be on Linux Mint. It can be on Arch Linux, on Arch Linux, on Solus, on anything, if as long as i3. And any of these tutorials will say that the configuration file of i3 is config. So this thing is super, super, super important. So open it up and start reading, basically. Um, you can set it to different kind of um, looks in the sense that super f for instance that is uh, making it a full screen you can try and, and make it more readable by going for for pearl or something like like that and see if this is more to your liking so everything that's that's hashtagged out has no color and all the rest that is applied so everything that this is not applied that is just text and you probably know that and see that but here it goes wrong as well this is applied so Perl is maybe not a good choice, but you can find out another kind of syntax and see if that works for you. This is already nicer. Anyway, you should read this because it is only, only thousand lines. So it's not uh, that much, <coughs> but um, there's a lot of writing in it. So if you want to find something about the gaps, and you want to have a gap, just start finding, search, search uh, the gaps. And here you can see what kind of width you want to get uh, between uh, windows. That's defined here and lots of other things. You can define and see, hey, is there something that is starting up termite? No results. Okay. So what about terminal? Okay. I have results here. Gnome terminal execute no startup gnome terminal that's the line that kicks starts and gnome when you boot up i3 and that's the line that kick starts nemo when you boot up so if you were on another machine and and you're having thunar you should change this that line there and and so on and so on it's not finished you need to actually read and think about these things there's also kaga i believe so it's another and uh, nautilus another i mean you have to figure out what to uh, start up as a file manager depending on what desktop you're working and at this point in time i'm working on cinnamon so this is good for me it's nemo right it's there it's available Control alt t let's first do a super f oops never make typos like this okay so basically um the message is go and and read stuff um, there is a Compton Conf that I've changed it as well a little bit <coughs> since previous version and um, you can change a lot of stuff and I can keep talking and talking for hours but there is Eric Dubois.be, there is the website, there's a lot of i3 tutorials you can also check out Arch Linux i3 tutorials i3 is independent you can install it on any system, on any desktop, please enjoy it because it deserves some more attention all right this is the end of the video enjoy your linux mint system enjoy i3